Hello, uh, Tulsi YouTubers and all of my other subscribers. This is uh, part three of uh, home winemaking. Today I'm going to be bottling a five gallon batch of Burgundy wine that we've already brewed, racked into a secondary fermentation chamber, which is this five gallon carboy. The wine is uh, aged for about a week and now it's time to bottle. Today I'm going to be using four different types of uh, bottles and capping systems, no, which I'll show you now. First is your traditional corked wine bottles using number eight corks. The second type will be screw top um, bottles. Uh, these screw top bottles are fine to use so long as you ensure that the um, seal inside the cap is still soft and fresh, hasn't cracked or started to dry out. Third type of capping system we're going to be using are pop top bottles. Pop top bottles, uh, just like the screw tops, are perfectly fine to reuse provided that, that the seal is in good shape. Uh, more or less about a, about a dozen uh, uses before they need to be replaced. The fourth type of system we're going to, we're going to be using today is <clears throat> crown caps. This, that's the traditional caps that you find on beer bottles. Uh, they're not twist tops, they're pressed on, pressed fit, one single use only. Okay, for crown capping bottles of wine, if you're using the traditional long neck um, beer bottles, like you get in bud, bud long, long necks, whatever, you can use a little handheld crown capper called a redhead. I picked this up at High Gravity in Tulsa. I was about $12.95 if I remember correctly and it works perfectly. If you want to uh, crown cap oddball bottles that are uh, not long necks, such, such as stubby bottles like this, or even uh, magnum champagne bottles that take crown cap, you'll need a different capping setup. setup. This is a standalone crown capper that's adjustable for different height bottles, and you can uh, use it for just about any bottle that takes the press on crown caps. Now for uh, bottling the cork beer uh, wine bottles, standard cork size is number eight. You can buy those in uh, bags of a hundred and to uh, cap those use uh, just a uh, corker which you'll see in, see in use in a little while. It's, it's really simple. All you do is take a sterilized cork Place it in the slot here, um, put it on top of the bottle, and rack your handles down. It squeezes a cork, pushes it into the top of the bottle, you're good to go. The next thing you need for uh, bottling wine is an auto siphon device, uh, a tube, and a bottle filler attachment at the bottom of the tube. This uh, keeps everything sterile and it fills the bottles perfectly. Now it's uh, on First thing to do with uh, the wine that's ready to go is take off the airlock attachment, slip the uh, auto siphon down into the bottle, lift it up slowly so that it fills the auto siphon. This one's a little bit older. Needs, uh, needs to be replaced in, so it might take a little while to get the siphon started. Put the bottle filler in a bottle. Shut it down and I'm good. This bottle fill filler is designed you're pressing down, <coughs> letting the wine flow, you let the wine fill all the way to the to top of the bottle, just where it's almost ready to overflow. As soon as it releases, you've got the perfect amount of head space for your cork, and you just lift it out, go on to the next wine bottle. Now all the 
cork bottles feel exactly the same, so I'm not going to make you watch all 12 of them. We'll go on to the pop top bottles and the twist tops next, and I'll show you how everything goes. Now, once you're ready to cork the bottle, I already have the cork inserted and slid down the slot. I bring the handles down. until it pops, lift back off, and as you can see, the bottle is perfectly corked. Next, uh, I'm going to fill pop, uh, pop top bottles. The filler works exactly the same as it does with cork bottles. <clears throat> Once bottle's filled, move the bottle filler to the next bottle, lift the cap up, and now they're a perfectly capped bottle of wine. Next I'm going to move on to screw top bottles. screw top bottle, I just take the lids that have already been inspected and soak in the sterilizing solution. Stay, shake any extra sterilizing solution out of the cap before you put it on the bottle. If a drop or two gets in your wine, it's safe, it won't harm the wine, and it's okay. Screw the lid on, good and tight, and there you have a successfully capped screw top wine bottle. Next, fun ones, we'll do a dem demonstration of a bottle or two of crown capped wine. I like these crown capped bottles simply because uh, they're about perfect ser uh, serving size, at least for me. Uh, some people who drink a little less might only drink a half of one, in which case, if you only drink half, put, press the cap back on as best you can and put it in the refrigerator and it should be good for about one or two days. I'm sure you all can see that <clears throat> I've got a mixture of green and brown beer bottles. Um, Traditionally, red wine's always been bottled in green glass bottles. The truth is, it doesn't really matter what color it is. The important thing is, uh, is protect it from sunlight, which is what the green glass does. White wine, on the other hand, has traditionally been bottled in yellow glass bottles. Uh, I think that's more for appearance sake. Personally, I don't think it makes any real difference. Now to the capping process. Take your filled wine bottle, sterilize crown cap. Okay. 
crown cap on top of the bottle. Everything is held down firmly. Holy shit, this isn't. And once again, you have a perfectly capped bottle of wine. Now I'll give a demonstration of the standalone capper. I've got a cap inside the magnetic cap holder. I square the bottle as closely as I can underneath. Gently bring the cap, the handle down until you can tell it's a nice straight fit, and then press until you feel a little pop and that tells you that your cap is on firmly. Fold the bottle, lift the handle and we have another bottle of wine perfect, perfectly capped. So I'm going to go over this once again. I've done a screw top bottle. Uh, these should store safely for about a year but just for safety's sake, I'd try to drink the screw top bottles first. Pop top bottles with the good seals, those uh, should store just as well as corked wine, which means pretty much indefinitely. Uh, corked wine with the fresh corks, make sure to store it on its side uh, so that the cork stays moist, and make sure to rotate them about a quarter turn every 30 days or so until you drink. Uh, the wine should be good for decades. Crown cap bottles, in theory, should be good for about four or five years. Uh, personally, I would drink them a lot quicker, and to tell you the truth, I've never had one last for more than about a year anyway. <coughs> well, uh, thank you for watching my presentation on bottling and capping homemade wine, uh, parts one and two, uh, brewing the wine, and uh, sterilizing equipment will come later. Thank you for watching. Bye.